Hello, I'm Stephen Boyle from Eastons.com and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome David Gillick uh, to Eastons today. His new book, David Gillick's Kitchen, has just been published by Mercer Press. David, thanks a million for coming in uh, to speak to us today. Uh, celebrity MasterChef champion, but more importantly, double European indoor champion over 400 metres. Obviously, food is hugely important mm. to you as an athlete. And um, what has running taught you about food? I suppose, like running, well, it's, it's taught me an awful lot of life lessons, but I think. A good couple of years ago, in about 2006, so I came off uh, a European Championships where I didn't do too well. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of really had to ask myself that question of, can I be up there with the likes of athletes from America, the Caribbean, strong 400 meter athletes? Um, and I kind of looked at everything, very holistic kind of approach mm -hmm. to it. And I looked at kind of, okay, well, what was I doing in, in the kitchen? You know, nutrition wise, was I eating? You know, in order to perform, um, and that's where kind of I suppose the the seed was planted, if you like. That I kind of took a holistic approach in relation to my recovery, and mm -hmm. um, my training, my mindset, and also nutrition. So you know, that's where I think I really understood that. You know, if I was to go into the kitchen and make something healthy, well, then that's going to keep my body functional. It's going to help me recover optimally. It's going to give me the energy mm -hmm. required to get through the tough training sessions and also compete at the at the, the, the highest level. Uh, against the likes of the Caribbean athletes and the American athletes, and I think nutrition then really kind of taught me the the, the importance of it, not only in sport, but now that I've retired outside of sport, and mm -hmm. um, you know, be be it a competitive athlete or be it a corporate athlete or, or a really busy parent, yeah. you know, the importance of fueling yourselves correctly um, is paramount. You know, in, in in any kind of day to day activity in order to perform, you know, so it taught me the balance of you know. Refueling, refueling yourself optimally in order to uh, to perform every single day. And how did that approach then feed into how you put the book together? How did, how did, how did you approach the book itself? Yeah, well I suppose the book kind of came about, obviously I went into MasterChef then and had that success there, which was something I wasn't really kind of planning yeah. or didn't really accept, uh, expect, but on the feedback from that was uh, the way I cooked. And I cooked a lot of healthy meals, because I suppose that's all that's all I know, that's all I've been, I've been doing. But you know, there was a lot of interest in relation to that. People, you know, over the years, I used to be asked two questions. Mm -hmm. One was how long do I run for, and the second was what do I eat. Okay. So I knew there was an appetite out there, if you like, for people that just wanted to learn a little bit more. But I think the philosophy about the book and how it kind of came about was I wanted to keep things really simple. Yeah. I wanted to keep it the fact that you know, if people who are working eight, nine hours a day, they've got busy family, kids, all that. They come home. They still want to eat healthy, mm -hmm. and just because you don't have the time, you shouldn't kind of get in the way of that. So, in the book, I really wanted to focus on kind of practical tips, practical meals that don't don't have a massive list of ingredients or take hours to make. You know, you can go to your local supermarket and get the ingredients, come home and make it quick and easy for the family. Yeah, and the thing I think that you notice about the book is that a lot of the recipes they only have a small amount of ingredients, which is fantastic because it means that they're, they're very straightforward. In relation to, everybody is always talking about superfoods and yeah. you know, the, the huge effect of them. If you had to pick out one food that you would class as the super, super, super food, which one would it be? I think when, when I look at the recipes throughout the whole book, I use a lot of quinoa, or quinoa as they say, um, which is a carbohydrate, but it's high in protein, it's full of vitamins and, and minerals. And I think it's now becoming more readily available and it's something that would be a fairly st staple uh, food in my diet. So yeah. yeah, look, there's plenty of superfoods out there. I think for me, it, it's quinoa. Quinoa is the one to go for. Okay, uh, winter is coming. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do to stay healthy, to keep all the colds and all the flus and everything at bay? What would you recommend that people can focus on for winter time? I think winter, like you said, the, the, it's getting colder out there. It's, it's dark, it's wet, it can be windy. And if we're active and we're outdoors, we need to make sure that one, we're refueling properly, but also getting enough fruit and veg in, into our diet. I think fruit and vegetables, vitamin, minerals, they boost our immune system, um, full of antioxidants. So going back to superfoods, they help fight the illnesses and keep us kind of performing at our best daily. So that's the that's the, the key tip to keep you healthy for this winter time. Fruit and veg, or so yeah, fruit and veg, fruit and veg. And um, what is um, your favorite recipe in the book? I think my recipe, uh, I love breakfast. Yes. I do love breakfast and um, I have an all-in-one breakfast. Okay. So I literally get everything, chuck it in the pan, crack in a couple of eggs, finish it off under the grill, and it's a one pot. Great if you have friends and any of for brunch, yeah. but at the middle of the table now, Tuck in. Quick and easy to make, and it's got great balance of protein and the carbohydrates. And this is the most important meal of the day. Breakfast is the most, yeah, breakfast, eat like a king. Eat like a king. And um, I'm kind of a bit of a runner, so, but I've always wanted to know what's it like 
in the seconds before the gun goes off at a, at a major championship? What goes through your head? Is your mind completely clear, or are you kind of what, what are you thinking about? Well, oh, every athlete's going to have their own sort of routine. For me, it was a case of I'd set my blocks. Um, I'd wait for the starter to say on your marks, mm -hmm. um, and at that point, I'd um, I'd bless myself. Um, you know, so I'm not too religious, but yeah. you know, I want him to be on my side. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd get into the blocks, and then it's a case of you just literally wait. Yeah. So yeah, it's all calm, it's all quiet. But I'd also kind of say um, to myself, the dynamite is lit, and when that gun goes. Off you head go, off. you head off. So it's it's a bit of a, a weird situation you're in. You could be in a stadium with eighty thousand people, but at the same time, it can be very quiet. Yeah, and you, that's always I wondered was: do you actually hear the people in the stadium, or do you just kind of focus and just block it all out? It's 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 noise. You know, yeah. it's kind of almost peripheral noise. Uh, you know, a lot of athletes again would have their own kind of routines, breathing routines, just to kind of keep them in that moment. Yeah. Um, and I would have been very similar to that. I would have been in, kind of gone through my various kind of mind techniques and kind of deal with the nerves and, and, and blank things out as well. There's a lot of commotion going on, but at the same time, you accept it, you're aware it's there, but you just focus on yourself. Perfect. David, thanks very much for coming in and having a chat with us today. David Gillick's Kitchen, published by Mercer Press, is available in all Easton stores and Easton's.com. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.